told you not to stop so fast. So in this cartoon rendering, it would appear as though the turtle came to an abrupt stop. And if the shell not attached to the turtle, then when the turtle came to a stop, the shell would just keep on going. And of course, the humor being turtles not really known for its high rates of speed. However, this situation would not ever happen to a turtle since, as you see now, the turtle and the shell really are one. As I was reading over your submissions for the explanations of the booths on Carnival Days, I saw that uh, only about half would include explanations involving inertia or stating what inertia is. So I thought it of particular importance to give a quick overview of the booth explanations in terms of law of inertia. Remember, law of inertia, making us aware, things like to keep on doing what they're already doing. Or more specifically, every object is going to continue in a straight line motion or a constant velocity unless it exerted upon by some other force. For the you spin me round booth, you had a raw egg and a hard boiled egg. One of them is a liquid, the raw egg, and the boiled egg is a solid. So as you spin them both, they want to keep on spinning. When you gently tapped on the egg for it to stop, the raw egg ever so slightly spun a bit more due to the inertia of the fluid, it wanting to keep on spinning. And it does so for a fraction of another second or so. Whereas the hard boiled egg, as it's one complete solid, not a fluid within a solid eggshell, with the hard boiled egg being entirely solid, you spin it, it, wants to keep on spinning, but then when you gently press on the top for it to stop, pretty much comes to a instantaneous quick stop. This is a fact you have known about long before you entered the world of physics in your high school days. This is something you learned about when you were a little child. And I always advocate that children make the best physicists. They're not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to try out things as they conduct investigations, answering their questions. Plus, their toys are the best physics equipment. But you have been aware of this concept that a fluid inside of a shell will keep on spinning for just a little bit more when the outside shell is made to stop. I'm talking about the situation where you take your uh, younger siblings, cousins, nieces, nephews, uh, folks from baby city, and you tell them to spin, 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 spin. And the children delight in spinning and spinning and spinning. And then you delight when you tell the child to stop spinning. And if you've ever looked closely at their eyes, uh, their eyes are darting back and forth. And of course, the delight you take is when the child falls over. The child has fallen over because the sensory device in our brains are shells that are responsible for balance, letting us know, are we upright? Are we moving forward? Are we spinning? Are we standing still? Are these semicircular canals? And it's part of your inner ear. So the ear responsible for balance. And uh, you may recall from your Physics A Ear We Go study guide, the ear is quite a complex mechanism. It's not just this outer cartilage that is your ear. You have your outer ear, your middle ear, and the inner ear. But anyhow, these semicircular canals, they're not part of the hearing process of the ear. Again, it's all about the balance. So when you, and they're filled with a fluid. So when you tell a young child, spin, 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 that fluid in these semicircular canals are going to spin, 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 spin. When the child is told to stop, or they themselves decide to stop, that fluid, like the liquid of the raw egg inside a shell, the fluid inside the shell of the skull is going to spin for just a little bit longer. And it's going to send the impulses to the brain, telling the brain, you're spinning. So when the eyes are darting back and forth, it's not because the eyes were spinning and they want to keep on spinning. It's because the eyes are looking around saying, no, we're not spinning, we're standing still. And the brain is sending a message, no, look again, look again, and Nope, we're not spinning while the brain is sending a message from the ears that, nope, we're spinning. 
So when your brain gets this contradictory information, the information from the fluid of your ears telling you that you're spinning, but your eyes telling you you're not spinning, the default mechanism of the brain is to put you in a safe position. And that safe position will be closest to the ground, hence why people fall. In the Mr. Spud versus Mr. Straw, the potato is just sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. When the straw is put into motion, it keeps on moving. And so this joint uh, two-object inertia, potato just sitting there, straw wanting to keep on moving, the potato, rather than move, the potato would sooner give up a piece of itself than change its position, than moving. And the straw does not crumble as it is moving, and it keeps on moving, and the potato gives up a piece of itself rather than change its motion. Just like when we're experiencing couch potato moments, we'd rather give up a piece of ourselves than change what we're doing. And by giving a piece of ourself, I refer to the deals that we make. Oh, if you do the dishes for me instead so I can keep watching this program, I'll do them for the next week, whatever the deal is that we make to give up a piece of ourself rather than change our couch potato position. For the pin drop, the clothespin is sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there, and it does. You move the paper, so you cause the index card, rather, to move. The clothespin is experiencing the same amount of gravitational influence as the card, the cup, the table, my hand. You perceive the clothespin to fall because the supporting surface is gone. So the clothespin, it's sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. When there's no supporting surface, that inertia is still there. The clothespin doesn't want to change its motion, and it actually doesn't. It just continues its falling towards the center of the earth as we all participate in daily. A coin toss uses the exact same principle as the pin drop. Instead of a pin, it's the penny. And the penny is just sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. You remove the supporting surface, and we see the penny fall towards the center of the earth. Thanks to the same amount of gravitational influence that the penny is sitting on here, 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 and here throughout its fall. Again, the penny is sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. So it does not change its motion. It has that reluctance to change its motion that we call inertia. In the jerk who came to dinner, the can is sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. And it does because of its reluctance of an object to change its motion. Because of the inertia of this can, it continues to sit there when the cloth is removed from underneath. The dollar bill and the bottle, it's very different than the jerk who came to dinner in that the inertia of the bottle is very small. It's very low mass. And so it's very difficult to try and pull the dollar bill out like the tablecloth. The roll the pencil around the dollar bill uh, strategy works if you're slow because... The bottle is just sitting there. It wants to keep on sitting there. And if you don't apply a force greater than the object's inertia, then you will be able to successfully, patiently pull the dollar bill out from under the bottle. Booth 8 is Life on the Edge. And in the presentation, How Lazy Can You Be? Part 2, we gave a pretty thorough explanation of the inertia properties which explain why the marble continues in that straight line path upon exiting the three-quarter plate. Thus, the theme and all the explanations being inertia, the reluctance of an object to change its motion.